All right, let's say I have a traverse A, B, C, D, E here, and I want to find all the azimuths of each of these courses, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, and E, A. But let's say I also, I, I have to start with something that I know, and let's say I know the azimuth of A, E. All right, so if this is north, maybe that would be 300... 15 degrees or something like that in azimuth. So what I would like to do is um, go clockwise, going clockwise around this this closed loop traverse. I would take the um, azimuth AE here and simply subtract because I'd be going clockwise around, um, taking starting at the azimuth AE. I would uh, go clockwise or counterclockwise uh, the angle at A, right? So little a, that would be the angle, the interior angle of A. So uh, the azimuth AE, which was really a back azimuth of EA if we're going in that direction. So um, that would give me AB. So the azimuth AE minus the angle at A is equal to the azimuth AB. Let's continue that on. So now that I know AB, I should be able to find BC, but what I really want to know is the uh, back azimuth of AB or BA. So once I figure that out, uh, we'll go to the spreadsheet and do that, then I would just subtract the back azimuth of AB. Um, I would take that back azimuth uh, BA and subtract B to find BC find the back azimuth of BC, subtract C, and that'll give me CD, and so forth as I go around. So we're going to go now to a spreadsheet, uh, well, in a minute. I want to go over the case where if I went counterclockwise around it, which I do have a video of how to do that on a spreadsheet, but just want to go over the theory right now. So if I know AE, if I'm, if I'm going to go clockwise around this traverse, I'm going to take the azimuth AE, and I need to know the back azimuth, EA, so that'd be the back azimuth of AE. And what am I going to do with that interior angle at E? That's actually going clockwise, so I would add the interior angle to the back azimuth. Again, that would give me EA, uh, or ED, and the back azimuth of that would be DE, and then add, because again I'm going clockwise, and that would add azimuth, so the back azimuth, plus the interior angle. So uh, in general, if I go counterclockwise, the back azimuth plus the interior angle. Clockwise, the back azimuth minus the interior angle. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so here's the setup for going clockwise around the traverse and starting with uh, the back azimuth of EA, which would be AE. Um, I first want to find the decimal degrees of that azimuth of, um, of EA, and the back azimuth would be AE. So this is just going to be equal to the degrees plus the minutes divided by 60, which is its portion of degrees, plus the seconds divided by 3600. So that'll give me decimal degrees. There. Okay, now that I have the azimuth, I need to find the back azimuth of, of, this, uh, of this azimuth. And I'll be doing that th through um, all the azimuths. So the azimuth here is greater than 180, so I'll just subtract 180 from it. So um, I'll take care of that with an if statement. So if this is, uh, I guess, greater than 180, I could go less than and just do accordingly, but if it's greater than 180, I'll just be taking that and subtracting 180 to find the reverse direction or the back azimuth. However, if it's not greater than 180, I'll add 180 to it, so I'll just add. 180 for the back azimuth. So that should take care of any back azimuth. 
as we see here, we're subtracting 180. I just will fill that upwards, and right now, 0, and 0 is less than 180, so I'm adding 180 instead of getting a negative. So seems like it's working. Then, um, this first, you know, well, I need to find all the interior angles and their decimal degrees, so that's the same, same thing, the degrees plus the minutes over 60 plus the seconds over 3,600. Fill that down. Okay, so uh, then I'm ready to find the azimuth. So here's here's the azimuth of, of EA, and then going clockwise, I would go to AB. And so the interior angle at B is, and that's why I underlined each of the um, course letters indicating the interior angle at that, at that point. So at point B, uh, the interior angle is this 96 point, whatever. So I want to take the back azimuth, and just like uh, we mentioned earlier, we want to um, go, or since we're going clockwise, we're actually uh, turning uh, counterclockwise, which would be subtracting the uh, interior angle from that back azimuth. So this should be equal to the back azimuth of the previous course, and that would be this one, and uh, subtract the interior angle. And that would be as simple as it needs, but if, um, since we're subtracting, there is a possibility that this azimuth would need to subtract a, um, or the back azimuth would subtract a number bigger than it, and I might get uh, lower than, I might go lower than zero, so I might get a negative number, so I'm going to throw in a an if statement here. So if this, if I subtract them and it's less than zero, then I need to add, I need to take this F6 minus E2, which is the back azimuth minus the interior angle, and add um, 360 to it. Otherwise, just do the subtraction. the if statement that should take care of all the rest. So I can fill those down to find all the azimuths and all the back azimuths. However, um, if we notice, if I double click on this, um, that looks okay. I want to make sure um, that this being filled down, this goes to F7, which which is um, needs to be moved to uh, the back azimuth that I found in F2. Uh, so change because we're wrapping around the the row here. So now that that's correct, and that's F2. I'll fill that down. And that should give me the azimuths of each of these courses. So G3, G4, that looks okay. Yeah, those those are all okay. It's just that the azimuth needed to be uh, computed from the... Uh, this first one was computed at the last one, and then the second one was computed from the first back azimuth here, and then down. So it's slightly staggered in that way. Um, and then we we parse those back out, and then we showed that in another video, which I'll put in a link uh, below. So that should do it.